In one of the rarest forests on earth lives one of the world's highest densities of bears. Both brown bears and black bears thrive here in record numbers. Bald eagles are also plentiful. With a nesting density higher than anywhere else in the world. Just off the coast, the ocean teems with life. The sheer abundance astounds the imagination. This is the Tongass, the rainforest of Alaska. The Tongass is located along the coastal panhandle of Alaska and also covers thousands of islands. No point on land is far from the sea. This is a place where bears dig for roots in the forest and clams on the beaches. Flowing between the forest and ocean are salmon. In the Tongass, millions of salmon thrive in thousands of streams throughout the forest. This abundance helps explain the high numbers of bears and other wildlife. Here, it can be said that bears are made of salmon. And in parts of this great forest, it can also be said that trees are made of salmon. How can this be? When I learned that scientists had discovered salmon in the trees, I knew I had to come here and see what this place was all about. And I knew I had to photograph it so that others could see it too. To understand the connection between salmon and trees, you first have to understand the life cycle of salmon. Salmon are born in freshwater streams and rivers. At a certain age, they leave the streams and make their way to the ocean. They spend anywhere from less than a year to seven years at sea. Then, they leave the ocean and return to the same streams and rivers where they were born. Think about how amazing it is that salmon can be out in the ocean thousands of miles away from where they were born, and somehow, at just the right time, they find their way back to the very place where they started their lives. That has to be one of the greatest feats of nature. Why do the salmon return? They're coming home to breed and ensure that the next generation of salmon is born. The females lay their eggs in the streams and the males fertilize them. After spawning, the adults die. In the Tongass, the forest plays an important role in the life cycle of salmon. Trees shade the spawning streams, keeping the water temperatures cool for the developing eggs. 
Trees also prevent erosion from fouling the clear water and gravel beds the salmon need to lay their eggs. And fallen trees over the streams create protected pools for the juvenile fish and provide food for the insects they eat. It's pretty easy to see how forests can benefit salmon, but it's not so easy to see how salmon can benefit forests. To understand this, we need to watch bears. Lots of bears. For many bears in the Tongass, salmon are an important part of their diet. Rich in protein and fat, the salmon help the bears gain the necessary weight they need to survive winter hibernation. When the salmon fill the streams, the whole forest comes alive. There are bears everywhere, eagles screeching, ravens cawing, and you're just watching this vibrant show of life going on all around you. I know that for every one thing that I choose to photograph, I'm probably missing a hundred other things going on right around me. For a long time, no one paid much attention to all the salmon that ended up in the forest. Often, bears will carry a fish away from a stream in order to avoid conflicts with other bears. It turns out that bears can move a lot of salmon into the forest. Researchers say one bear might carry 40 fish from a stream in eight hours. At certain times of the year, the bears target the richest parts of the fish and leave the rest behind. Other animals feed on the remains and spread the salmon farther throughout the forest. The nutrients from the bodies of the salmon eventually filter down into the soil and the trees absorb them through their roots. So salmon help feed the trees. Scientists have traced a particular form of marine nitrogen in trees near salmon streams that links back to the fish. Salmon not only grow the trees, but they actually grow in the trees. Once you understand this remarkable connection, you quickly see that everything here is connected. The oceans, forests, salmon, and trees. We need the same things that salmon need in order to thrive. Clean, fresh water, unpolluted air, a stable climate, and a healthy food supply. What happens to the salmon if we cut down the forests? What happens to the forests if there are no salmon? What happens to the bears, the eagles, and the sea lions? And ultimately, what happens to us? The Tongass is one of the rarest places on the planet, and it's astounding that this connection between salmon and trees is still intact. The Tongass is a national forest. It's public land entrusted to all of us. What an incredible gift. I hope that we ensure that the Tongass continues to be a place where trees grow salmon and salmon grow trees. It's up to us.